So when you use the backup, what are you supposed to do? Get another backup, right? How am I supposed to know it's gonna run out? It hasn't You're supposed to time. look, that's why there's gauges. So do you realize we're closed, we're done. We can't sell one beer. I don't have nitrogen, where do I get nitrogen from? You get it from your vendor. Now we gotta close the damn bar down. Richard, you blew it. So here's what I wanted to do for my recon tonight. Because of this industrial area, I'm guessing they sell a lot of beer in there. So I got Mike and Tom from TurboTap to go in. TurboTap pours beer three times faster and increases yield by almost 30%. Oh, cool. They know Las Vegas. They know the competitive bars. Perfect. And they'll give us a good local perspective on what's going on in there. Guinness. Guinness, nice premium product. So that's Chris, the owner, blowing that cloud of smoke. Think about this. Chris wrote me an emotional letter expressing the problems with the bar. But look at him. He's sitting on his ass. Mitch is over here washing dishes. He's sitting outside drinking and smoking. He should be ashamed of himself. That's the wrong way to do a Guinness. That glass should be on a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Let's see what Michael says about this Guinness. I gotta wait for it to cascade. It's bitter, because he gave it to me too early. What's happening is, she did it that way. It removes some of the carbonation from the beer, and it's not as good. I'll tell you what, my beer is just warm. You know, when beer is warm that way, it foams up when you dispense it. You wind up pouring 30% of every keg down the drain, and what you're pouring is a flat, warm beer. I have a thermometer here, which is something that you should always have, because it's very important to know what temperature we're dealing with. So I'm gonna fill this up. I can see already, look at that. When beer is warm, it foams, and then we get about a 50 or 60% yield out of a keg. For beer lovers, foam or head is paramount in creating the appeal of beer and shouldn't exceed one and a half inches in depth. Foam not only looks great, it informs how the beer will smell and therefore taste. The human nose has much more sensory perception than the tongue, so the aroma given off by the head is where most of the beer's flavor exists. However, when a beer is poured at a temperature above 40 degrees, the foam may double or triple, destroying the quality of the head. Down to 43 was as low as it went. Yeah. So we're dumping foam all day long because of the temperature back there. We gotta fix that, guys. We got a serious problem. So Becky, I want you to come back here and pour me a Guinness. Now that is exactly how you do not pour a Guinness. You know, there are six steps to pouring a perfect pint. She's breaking every rule that there is. You're gonna put it right under the tap at a 45 degree angle. As you pour your Guinness, you're going to straighten the glass out. And you're gonna want that beer to come up right to the top of the heart. We call that the crest. You're gonna set it down, and we're gonna let it cascade. The nitrogen releasing flavors and aromas. Guinness drinkers are incredibly loyal. It's important, guys, that we do this right. Now we keep it flat. We're gonna go just above the top of the rim so that it forms a crown. It takes 119.5 seconds to pour and serve the perfect pint of Guinness. You know, I can give you all the best equipment. John's gonna come and make an amazing bar for you. If you guys don't have that knowledge, it's all for naught. So this is yeast. Do you know what yeast does? Creates gas. And you need a grain. It helps with body. It helps with head retention on a beer. It'll actually add this color to a beer. Here we have hops, a natural muscle relaxer. So if you say, I wanna go have a beer and relax, you're actually telling the truth. Because beer will actually help relax you. I am so excited to actually learn things about beer. Instead of people schooling you all the time, you know, you kind of have something to tell them. Mix, you got it. The bar gets packed right away. You do not want to have your nozzle in the beer. Bam, the stress got to them. They kept forgetting things. Are you kidding me? No, 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 sorry, sorry, bring it back. We don't serve it until it's ready. I'm starting from a terrible place. They can't even serve beer. Did you just bring them more beers? Yeah, one. You did? Oh, you did? I got, I got, oh, everybody over there has their beer. Are you So you sure? brought more Kilkenny's over there? I need, actually I need two Guinnesses over there, I'm sorry. Chris was completely in the way tonight. I would have three beers lined up that needed to cascade, so I'd turn around, he would just take them. He was doing more harm than he was doing good. Shoot. 
He just took a whole bunch of them over to the corner over here. Do you see in the corner? Careful, yes, because you're mixing up what I have settled. They're all kill kids. I know that, but they're not settled yet. If I don't change, Chris, I will never rescue this bar. You don't even know the names of the freaking beers. You're not even pronouncing yes. them correctly. Without a commitment to quality, you're not going to succeed. What is the name of that beer? Read it. Ken Kelly. It's not Ken Kelly. Read it. Kim Kenny. Kill Kenny. Kill Kenny. Say it ten times. Kill Kenny. 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 If you can't say it, your staff can't say it, right? Yeah. Come on. Yes. You have to lead by example okay. and fight for your standards. And the name of that beer is? Kill Kenny. Kill Kenny. Thank you. I would say the gans is a little bit warm and a little bit foamy on the top. You know, it's been sitting here for five minutes now and it's still a little bit foamy. There's nothing worse in a bar than warm beer. Foam everywhere. I need to figure out what the hell is going on here. Starving. So I just figured this out. You know why our beer's tracking at 44 degrees? And every five to 10 seconds, they open those frickin' doors, grab cold pint glasses. The coolers never come down to temperature, and the whole cooler is warm, so all of our beer is warm. That's what's going on. This is a beer bar. So I wanted to bring some beer professionals in. So I have two brewers from Laverne Brewing Company, which is a great local brewery here in town. They know beer quality, and they know the marketplace. I'm curious to hear what they think. Hi, Hi, welcome. Hi. How you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, are you excited? About open mic night. Do you guys have a, like, a beer list by chance? We do not. I'll take my beer. Do you have any shout One. Right Thank you. This is not my place. I guess it's open mic night. I guess. <laughs> how about the foam? Look at this. Wow. No head on that beer at all. Right there is where half of their beer costs is. So that was probably 40% of that beer. Easy. Mm -hmm. I have concerns about what we refer to as a beer clean glass because you could tell by the way that it was poured in the lack of standing head that there's some residue from somewhere inside that glass. I had a beer that was old. The characteristics of an IPA would be the hops would be there and they weren't there. So that means the beer's old. They've fallen off. Do you see any open mic stuff happening? No. This is the epitome of a bad bar promotion. You see, the worst thing you want to do is start something and then not get it going. Okay, so what is she making there? That's a brewed Mary, right? Bloody Mary mix, little hot sauce, beer. Yeah, a little spice, a little beer, a little Bloody Mary. That pour was so clogged, she had to screw it off the bottom. Look at the chow! Look at the chow! Oh, oh man, oh. it chunks! It was so thick, it wouldn't even go through the pour, but then she had to oh squeeze. Oh my gosh, if it is that chunky, then there must be something wrong with it. And the fact that you would see that as you're putting it in a drink and still serve that drink speaks to standards. Unbelievable, right? right. Oh! So they keep a pitcher of water next to the tapper to rinse the foam. So they expect wow. the foam. It's status quo, I guess. And there's Jim. He doesn't see the beer going down the drain. He doesn't see anything. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. If they could quit bickering, they would be much better off. Chris is just completely unapproachable. She walks around with a scowl on her face. You know, these two are polar opposites. Chris, could we get some beers? Bottles. Thank you. He only drinks bottled beer in his bar. Can you blame him? Is this yours? No, it was just here. Sorry, you want to put your phone for a second? I don't want to get anything on it. Yeah. I can smell the pine salt. I'm, I'm enjoying it. The guys that come in here call it the chemical because we don't even know, I don't even know what that cleaner is. Really? It's like one of those bulk cleaners, so we put it in a spray bottle that's just like this. Like we just refill it. So my friend, he's like the chemical like, the cleaner. But I think it is pine salt, pretty much. 
wash your hands. Please wash your hands. Please oh, wash, your, wash, please your, wash hands. your hands. You just handled chemicals, cleaning products. The popcorn is being scooped out, and her hand is all over it. The pitcher she's pouring is all foam right now. Oh, wow. It's beer. We're not reinventing the wheel here, John. Uh, but that beer can cost 8 to 20 cents an ounce, and that's really expensive when it goes down the drain. Absolutely. And we just saw hundreds of ounces go down that drain. I think they poured more than they served. But night after night after night, has Jim done the math and said, you know, if I dump three beers every time I sell one, I can't make money. His back is to the bar. He's oblivious to what's going on. His bar is hemorrhaging money, and he's got a Kool-Aid smile. You know, this guy does not know the economics of beer. I'm going to teach him. He needs to learn, doesn't he, Sean? Good luck with that. Jim, you the owner? Yes, I am. I want to show you something. Come back with me for a minute. Just give me a pitcher of beer and a bunch of glasses. Oh, of course. One down. Keep going. Let's go. OK, Jim, did you buy this bar to make money? I did. Fill that pitcher with beer. I want you to hold it on an angle, because I'm going to catch all the foam coming out. Go ahead. But just keep the foam coming into the glass, OK? Keep going. It's killing me. Keep going now, Jim. Let's keep going. We're really making money now, aren't we, guys? Hey, let's keep going. There's another one. Let's go. Here we go. Keep pouring. Come on, Jim. Keep pouring it. OK. There's about three and a half glasses of beer in that pitcher. How many glasses are here? One, two, three, four and a half. What beer do you drink in your bar? Uh, bottle. Why? Because it tastes better. Does anybody here want to drink this, really? Is this not the worst beer you've ever seen in your life? Because your beer sucks, right? For the most part, yeah. And you know that. Yeah. But you'll let him drink it, but you won't. Well, yes. How do you feel when you dump beer down a drain all night long? Do you ever feel like an idiot? Well, obviously. Yeah. And then it overflows the foam. So you've prepared for it, haven't you, with this? Yes. What is this? Hot water. And what is that for? To keep the hops from building up in the line. Because you didn't do your job. They now have to take a warm pitcher and rinse this off all night long. And as an end result, every beer you sell costs you three. So can you make money like this? No. If you know that, why are you watching your money go down the drain? So you stupid or lazy? What's going on? So how are you? Yeah, can I get a Bud? And how about you, hon? I have a Bud Light. Whoa! What kind of pouring is he doing? She's hot. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, what do you think? Here's a little uh, flat, maybe. How can you succeed pouring a bad beer in St. Louis? This is the home of Budweiser. That's an embarrassment. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Good. Good. From what I've heard about the recon, these guys lack the basic bartending skills to get this done. These guys have spent enough time making mistakes, pouring beers, pouring Andrea's money down the drain. So they're going to have to start from the beginning and relearn things like draft beer porn. From what I've been told, there was a lot of waste last night, and that's not something that we want. That's the reason you're in the position you're in. Yeah. First thing you want to start with is a beer clean glass. That will allow the beer to give you a nice, even one inch standing head. Start from the bottom of the tap handle, not the top. You want to hold your glass at a 30 degree angle. You do not want to touch the nozzle. And as the beer fills, you're going to slowly straighten the glass. Allow that head to settle. With a proper pour, you should be at exactly one inch. That serves many purposes. The first thing is aromatics. It opens up the smell of the beer. It's also for profit as well, because that foam is approximately 25% beer. Now we're going to see how you do it. Let's start with you, big boy. Come <laughs> on. Yeah. Money down the drain. Close, but no cigar. Tina, I think that we are pretty close. 1.03. Good job. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. 
Remember, everything that we learned in training, make sure that you have a beer clean glass. I'll take a bye-bye. Yeah, but... Can I get an Ambrock? I can already tell that has way too much head. First beer up, first beer down. Oh. Uh, Come on, Cameron. Way too much head. Do it again. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Two drinks. Cameron, you're going to be broke before you make anything at this race. 1250, you guys. Thank you very much. You OK? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go pour the beers. Does that look like one inch of standing head to you? Listen, I can appreciate that you want to help, but right now you're just in the way, kid. We either got to get them right or get out of here. Where's Kim's bucket? Now get out. No bucket for Kim. This is beer you could be drinking. Well, what do you want me to do? Just walk around and see if you can help people. How's Tina yeah. doing? Tina's the one with the most money. Can I get you anything? A light draft. A light draft? Awesome. I have two vice presidents of one of my most important clients here, and wife, Bush. And they're expecting good beer and a great bar. I don't know anybody who knows more about beer than you guys do. So, how's your beer? You got a nice cold draft, but this is not a beer clean, ready glass. And you can see the head is gone, because it's not beer clean. Andrea, can I show you something for a minute? Yes, sir. Andrea, Rick, Josh. The head on this beer disappeared instantly. The glass itself wasn't beer clean ready. It is a good quality beer, but if it's served like this, you're getting a suboptimal experience. OK, uh, Tina, this glass wasn't drinks. properly cleaned. We need a new one. There we go. Now look at the head. Thank what do you say, you. Rick? So many cheers. Hi, guys. Hey, good. How are you? Here's your beer list, and back of it is your food list, OK? Thank you. I've never seen so much empty space in a bar in my life. Or a bar where I felt like I had to whisper. Yeah, seriously, right? Do you brew your own beer here? No, we don't. You don't? So you're not a brew house. Right. Because you're called a brewing company. I'm trying to figure this out. How many beers do you actually have? I believe uh, I've had in this company. Eighteen. The sign says you have a hundred. Right, right. Give me one of those for now. Okay. We have five types of wings. Do you want me to order each one of them? Yep. Okay. We'll see if it's cold and if it's right. Is that the way a beer should look when you serve it? You didn't pour the beer correctly because it has no head on it. Most of the flavor comes from the head of a beer, but the glass is so dirty that the head wouldn't formulate in the first place. So let's see if you can pour me one correctly. Try it again. Wow. Let's see if we get this guy's attention. All right, let's try round two. That's more like it. You all right? Oh my god. My first beer in there was really nasty and bitter. It was kind of a no-win situation in the liquor department there. Something has to be wrong with their draft beer system. Neil Witte is one of nine master cicerones in America. I want Neil to look at the bar, see what we got going on here, and then chef go in the kitchen. Let's take a look at the kitchen. Let's see what we got, OK? This bar is all about beer, so I brought in just the right expert. Let's see what you get out. Got some brown stuff on that one there. And you and can smell it. this is symptomatic of the lines not being cleaned. Every beer distributor cleans their lines where their beer is at. Do you know when your lines were cleaned last? They were cleaned Monday. They were cleaned Monday? No way. Is that clean? No. You don't verify anything. You can't even get two inches of chrome clean. I see now why you want to sell the place. Let's go see the beer cooler. Last night, Maria spit out her beer, and the customers are saying that it's flat. So today, I want Neil to go through the beer system top to bottom. Look at that. That's mold. White, bloomy mold. All that stuff's going right into your beer lines. Is anybody even checking on this? I mean, you got to validate this stuff. There's obvious signs of neglect in the system. There's mold growing down there. Richard needs to learn more about his draft system in order to serve the best beer he possibly can. We got a lot of work to do. We got to have to replace some of these lines and rotate kegs, of course. For tonight's stress test, we're going to focus on beer. 
targeting those half a million workers that are down here every day. Welcome to the Los Angeles Brewing Company. Let's get this going. How's it going, guys? Hey, good. All right. Stand that beer up. Manufacture that head. Customers are here. They're really cranking right now. They're pouring a good head on the beer, the right glassware. It's awesome. Yeah, look at all that head. How are your beers? Cold. Are they cold? Good? Exactly as it should be. Who's still waiting? Israel, take care of this poor guy, will you? I will, on a double. Israel is leading the bar. He's almost keeping up with the pace. He showed me tonight that he cares and he can learn. Hitting. It's real slow. If it's not coming out right anymore, then stop serving it. We can't get beers out at all. It's barely trickling out of the tap. One by one, all the beers are, are slowing down and stopping. The line is stuck, too. Yeah, what's my dream? Still waiting for our drinks. Very frustrating. What's wrong? What's worse? It's slow as it fast. Yeah, no, it, the pour keeps the pour it's coming out to a trickle. Yeah. Because so there's something wrong with the pressures. Yeah. Who knows the draft beer system? My uncle does. Okay, let me deal with him. Richard, we got a problem. They're losing pressure on the draft beer system. Go check it out. See what's happening in there quickly, because the people are waiting. We can't serve this beer. OK. All right, guys, sorry. I can't, I can't serve the beer that we have right now. I can't serve no more beer right now. What's going on? It says right here that it's low. Where's your backup? Do you have a backup tank? We've been running on this nitrogen with a backup. So when you use the backup, what are you supposed to do? Get another backup, right? How am I supposed to know it's going to run out? It hasn't You're supposed to tank. look. That's why there's gauges. So do you realize we're closed? We're done. We can't sell one beer. I don't have nitrogen. Where do I get nitrogen from? You get it from your vendor. Now we got to close the damn bar down. Richard, you blew it. Ladies and gentlemen, listen up. We cannot sell any beer. Go home. We can't serve you. This stress test was a disaster. This bar failed miserably. And I got to start from square one tomorrow morning. I'm going to get the hell out of no, here and try a new bar. We expect it better from this place. Thank you. You see, this is the kind of I was telling you about. The nitrogen is going to disappear. Of course it does. Yeah, I'm upset, I'm disappointed that we have to fail this way. Let's try to get this piece clean and get the f out of here. He's tired, I'm frustrated, you know? I'm only one person, man. I, I can't do everything myself, so I'm done. Hi, this is John Taffer. Click here to subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube for more Bar Rescue.